You're listening to the Sasha Davis Podcast, a show about overcoming fear and manifesting your dream life. Each week, we'll dive deep into real stories and tangible advice about spirituality, law of attraction, mindset, and money so that you can be your happiest, healthiest, and most abundant self. You ready? Here we go. Hey guys, what's up? I'm back at you. I know it's been a hot minute since I've uh, posted a podcast, put a podcast out there. So I thought, what better time than now? I am currently following uh, my husband. He's pulling our camper, has the kiddos, and I am in a different vehicle following behind. Um, We have a couple last loads of things we have to take care of before we hit the road officially. So I thought I'd just kind of update you guys on life because the last time I talked to you, I talked a little bit about, you know, how I came to be at the place that I am. I believe the episode was rock bottom. So if you haven't listened to that, go back and listen to that because a lot has changed in, in my lifetime. Hell, even in the last five or 10 years, you know, I was just talking to my husband about that yesterday when we were out running some errands and and doing a few things and he says we've both changed and we've both you know grown together over this last 10 years he goes because you are not the person I met (laughs) you know back in I think we met in 2009 so it's actually been what is that 11 years 12 years something like that so we've been together for quite some time and you know, it's interesting. There's some couples that grow apart and then there's other couples that grow together. And I definitely think that we are that couple that has grown together and our marriage is stronger for it. We've had lots and lots of uncomfortable conversations, but we're not afraid to have those conversations. We're not afraid to open up to one another. Well, I take that back. It is scary opening up to one another, even if it's your spouse but we do it and we try not to hide anything. We try to, you know, share how we're really feeling. We try to share if we need some time to ourselves, you know, like he has his days where he needs to, you know, go golfing with the buddies or, you know, go (laughs) disappear for an entire day. And I, you know, sometimes I'll throw a fit, but then usually I don't question it because he lets me, I shouldn't say let, you know, but we are okay with each other going and doing what we need to do to take care of ourselves. And I think that that's healthy in a relationship, right? You guys both need time away so that you can be stronger when you do come back together. And that's, you know, a topic for an entirely different episode. Maybe I can start convincing my husband to come on here with me. I know I've been telling you guys that for a year or two, but we will be doing a birth story podcast here soon because I do find, I do feel like this was the best birth experience that I've had yet. Like everybody keeps asking me, how are you feeling with three kids? And I'm like, I feel fantastic. Like I feel Like I didn't even have a baby like two weeks ago, you know, it's just wild. And like part of me in the back of my head is like waiting for the, you know, that self-sabotage starts to creep in like, oh, just wait, things are going to get real bad, but I'm trying not to go down that. I'm just focusing on where I'm at now and all the good that's happening. And I feel like that's been really helpful. So just in the last month to kind of update you guys, we have been downsizing, minimizing our, uh, our belongings to be able to sell our house and move into an RV, um, or a camper, whatever you want to call it, RV camper. There's like a a rig. (laughs) Once you join like the camping community or the RV community, everything's a rig. And so I just thought that that was funny. But anyways, uh, we we're, we're full-time RVers now. This has been something that we've been thinking about, um, maybe for about a year. We've been thinking about getting a camper and traveling the world for the last couple of years, but we did not even consider doing it full-time until we tried to sell our house last year. And the whole deal kind of fell through, which was a blessing in disguise, right? Every time something happens, you guys know that something better is around the corner. And so the house that we almost purchased last year fell through at the last minute. And so we just kind of threw our hands up in the air and, you know, we're like, you know what, screw it. We're going to go get away for a bit, get away from all this chaos and drama of like house hunting and da, 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 da. And that took us on a 10 day road trip out to Montana where we just, oh man, fell in love with that state. And I have a very strong feeling that that is where we will end up. Um, 
but we're just kind of enjoying life right now and, and really trusting the process and trusting that things will work out. We're just you know, put one foot in front of the other, take the next right step. You know, we have a really big vision of what we're looking to create, but we're also just out having fun and living in the moment. So, um, we have sold our house. We have downsized from, I think we had, you know, about a, well, I think officially was about an 1800 square foot house finished. And then we had an additional like 800 or a thousand square foot basement that was unfinished. That was just like storing a bunch of stuff. So I don't know, a damn near 3000 square foot house, 2,500 square foot house down to an RV, a camper, a tow behind camper. And we have three kids and we have two dogs and they are all coming with us. Um, and so that's what we've been doing this last month or two is we've been downsizing from that house into a camper. And in between all of that, um, I was about 37 weeks pregnant and we needed to find a long-term temporary home for my horses, um, like a boarding facility, if you will. We had a local place, but I wanted them to be I don't know. I just wanted them to be somewhere where we were kind of heading. Um, and so we're bouncing around the ideas of living in like Oregon, Washington, Montana. And so anyways, um, I knew some folks out in Oregon who said that they would, you know, they have like a, a really nice place. They have some horses already. They kind of do boarding and all of that stuff. And they're like, Hey, bring your horses out here and we'll, we'll help you out. And so I was 36, 37 weeks pregnant and we hopped in the truck and drove our horses with our two dogs and our two kids at the time while I am so pregnant, drove all the way from Iowa to Western Oregon and back. It was a little over 4,000 miles round trip. I think it took us a week and a half or so to make that whole trip. It was like four or five days out there and then uh, four or five days back. And when we were you know, we stopped and did some things along the way. And when we got there, we kind of explored the area. You know, we went down to California. We saw the ocean. We went and seen the redwoods. It was, it just reminded me like, yes, we are doing the right thing because I love traveling. I love exploring. I love seeing new things. And there's so much out there to see. And you guys know, like, if you've been following me a while, you just, you'll know when it's the right thing. It's like God or the universe or, you know, something gives you a sign like this is where you need to be. You just have like overwhelming sense of peace and calm and joy and gratitude. And that whole trip, I felt that like people were calling me crazy. I can't believe you're driving across the country. You're this pregnant. You have two, like you have this trailer with horses. You have two giant dogs. You have kids. You have all these things. And I'm like, I'm just so thankful to be in this position. Like this is just, I, ah, it was so cool. The horses did amazing. You know, a lot of times traveling that far, horses do not do well. And it was that week you guys where it was like 90, hundred degrees. Like the whole country was like on fire. It was just insane. And the horses did phenomenal. And it wasn't the super heat wave yet because as soon as we got back, it got even hotter. It was like into the upper 100s or like past 100. So the week that we went, it was only in like the 90s. Listen to me, only in the 90s. It was ridiculously hot. But, you know, we stopped often. We hosed down the horses, you know, cooled them off. Um, and we stayed at horse hotels kind of along the way so that the horses had, you know, overnight boarding and were able to get out and stretch their legs and you know, roll around and all that kind of fun stuff. And, um, they just, they did so good. They did so good. I had so many people messaging me that they're like, you're insane for doing this. But I did a ton of prep work leading up to that. Like I was researching, you know, how to haul in a trailer, what you need to give them, what type of supplements to, uh, make sure that they are, you know, at their optimal levels. How often should you stop? How often should they rest? Um, what can you do to cool them off? And I had all the vet supplies. I had my vet working with me on this. I had some, you know, people who also practice energy healing, kind of sending good vibes, but I had all of the medicine along the way in case somebody colicked or sprained an ankle. Like I was over prepared for everything. And so if you ever do like a big trip like that, I highly suggest whether you have animals with you or not, just do your research, you know, get to know your vehicle, get to know your rig, get to know your route, uh, get to know your stops, make sure that you know how to change a tire, you know how to check the oil, you know how to do all of these things because there's a lot of people out there. It's like a lost art. Like people just assume 
somebody else is going to take care of your shit for you. And it's like, well, why not assume 100% responsibility for the things that you call yours and be able to take care of it yourself? And, you know, there is some times where you need to call in an expert, right? Like, I'm obviously not a veterinarian, and if something super serious needed to happen or happened... I would obviously call a vet, right? Or if something seriously wrong happened, or something seriously, yeah, wrong happened to my vehicle, I would need to call a mechanic. But there's nothing that says that you shouldn't have like a basic understanding of how your machine and yourself and your animals operate. Like that to me should be common knowledge. But there's so many people I know nowadays that don't even know how to change a tire. It blows my freaking mind. Like I just... I can't even, yeah, I just, I, I can't even. (laughs) So anyways, we did that and then we got back and then we really started downsizing on our house because we had sold our house before we had left to go to Oregon. Our house sold within days, but then the whole closing process took about six weeks um, just because everybody's backed up with how hot the market is. And so we didn't actually close on our house until August 2nd. So we had some time to kind of like pack and all that stuff when we got back. So that's what we did. Um, And then when I was 40 weeks and three days, we welcomed a beautiful little baby girl into the world. It was, like I said, the best birth experience that I have had to date. And I mean, I've only had three birth experiences, but they just seem to keep getting better. So I'm like, Hmm, who knows? Maybe we'll have a whole litter of children. Um, and then, uh, about this, well, this last week. So now she's two weeks old, a little over two weeks old and we closed in our house. So we finished packing everything out of our house, putting things in storage. We made a bunch of trips to, um, donation to get rid of things. I mean, we downsized, like I said, a three bedroom, three bath house into a camper about a, I don't know, three or 400 square foot camper. Um, so that's, that's us. That's me in a nutshell. And right now we are on our way to the next campsite, one that has full hookups because the place that we were at was, um, electric only. And so we want to, you know, dump the tanks and just do a few things, you know, before we really hit the road. So we're going to stay here for an evening and then hit the road Thursday for our first full-time trip, I guess you could say. And if you're interested in following along with this journey, me and my husband are actually putting together uh, a YouTube channel. So we're working on that. Um, I have an Instagram page set up and I'm working on the website for that too. And it's kind of just like a just for fun personal family blog, I guess this is something I just just to document our journeys. And so if you guys want to follow along with that, you can head over to Instagram at Sasha and will S A U S H A A N D W I L L Sasha and will. And so there you'll find our family adventures, our RV travels. Um, we'll start doing some Q and A's and the YouTube channel should be coming soon. I have, uh, I have some video ready. Um, but between moving and having a baby and finishing up this last group program that I just did, I have been short in the time department. If you can, uh, understand, which I'm sure you do, right? We're all quote unquote busy moms. So just picking and choosing what I do with my time in the YouTube channel, as much as I want to do that right this second, I'm going to wait another week or two until we kind of hit the road. And then we'll, we'll hammer all out all the details for that. So that's me in a nutshell. That's what I've been up to. That's what we've been doing. I'm really excited. This is something, you know, I just never even thought was possible for me. Um, and it just goes to show that like, you know, the time is now to start living the life that you want to be living. Like you don't have to wait until someday when you don't have to wait until things are perfect. You know, this took us a a year or two, um, to get underway and that's okay. Like don't rush things. Like if there's something that you want to do, if you want to start a business, if you want to start exercising, if you want to travel the world in a freaking van or an RV, like do it, start taking steps today to make it happen. You don't have to wake up tomorrow and just toss everything out the window, but you can start downsizing now, or you can start researching what type of RVs you want, or you can start looking at what type of business you want to start, or you can start looking at going back to school. If there's a different trade that you want to learn, if you want to be a doctor, if you want to be a therapist, if you want to be a coach, like there's things that you can do right here, right now to start making that 
possible for yourself. And so don't let anybody else convince you otherwise, because if they're not in, if they're not in the same game as you, then their opinion should not matter. And I know that's easier said than done because we feel like our loved ones should be there to support us. But I'm telling you, everybody in my family basically thinks I'm insane. I'm okay with it because I've never been more happy in my entire life. And so people can have their opinions about me. Their opinions don't pay my bills. Their opinions aren't helping me travel the world. So what they say is in one ear and out the other. And I know they have the best of intentions, but that doesn't mean that I have to, that I have to limit who I am and what I want to do for other people. It doesn't mean that I have to let their discomfort be my discomfort, right? And the same thing for you. You don't have to let other people's opinions be the ruler of your life. You don't have to let other people's discomfort be yours. You don't have to take on that shit. Like you are your own person and start asking yourself, what do I want? What does, insert your name, want? What does Jessica want? What does Amy want? What does Ariel want? What does Trissa want? What does Sasha want? What does Courtney want? What do you want? Ask yourself this question every day and don't say, well, I have to do this because so-and-so told me to, or I have to do this because I feel bad. Guilt will always be there in some way, shape, or form. But guilt is not a high vibration energy. And if you live in a constant state of guilt or stress or overwhelm, guess what you're gonna manifest more of? guilt, stress, overwhelm. And it's up to you to break the pattern. And especially if you have kids, right? If they see you putting yourself on the back burner and living in a constant state of fear or stress or overwhelm, what do you think they're going to think is normal, right? And they will actually start to mirror you. They'll start to say things that you're saying. They'll start to do things that you're doing and talk about a wake up call. I mean, my daughter, if uh, my oldest daughter, I should say, which is just crazy to say now that I have two daughters, two daughters and a son, you guys, like the person who thought they'd never have kids has three kids. (laughs) It's wild. Oh, this world, this life is just wild. And I just love every minute of it. The good, the bad, the ugly. But she says, my daughter, my oldest daughter says and does things. And I'm like, oh my God, open mouth, insert foot, right? Like I'm just eating my own words. And so it just is constantly reminding me to check myself, check myself, check myself. Am I being the leader of my life? And so you got to ask yourself that too. Are you being the leader of your life? Are you practicing what you preach? Are you living the life that you want to be living? And if not, get happy now. What can you be grateful for now? It's all about perspective, guys. Okay. Simplify, simplify, simplify. The less you have, like the less you physically have, the more happy I think you'll ultimately be because sometimes I think we just buy shit or do things to fill a void in our life, you know? So what can you get rid of and replace with more experiences maybe? What can you let go of to create more space for freedom? The freedom to choose what you want to do with your time, right? So that's what I got for you guys today. That's my that's my spiel for today. And then I also want to let you know that I do um, have a few spots still available for that Lake of the Ozarks retreat. Um, I had quite a few people sign up um, in June, July, and then I kind of fell off the bandwagon. You know, I was having a baby and traveling across the country. So there are still a few spots available for that. You can head over to SashaDavis.com. Otherwise, message me directly on Instagram, um, Sasha.Davis, or you can even hit me up on the new Sasha and Will. Um, the details are there. But if you have questions, I do have a couple promo codes left. If you're looking for a little bit of a a price break or a discount, I do have a few available. So hit me up October 7th through 10th. I would love for you guys to be there. It's going to be so much fun. I love sharing all of my knowledge with you guys. There'll be some one-on-one stuff. There'll be some group stuff. All of your meals are taken care of. We're going to do some Uh, horseback riding, some little bit of adventuring. I have a sunset dinner cruise planned for us. So it'll be so, so, so fun. I would love, love, love for you to share that space with me for those days. And again, if you have questions, just hit me up and I'd be happy to answer. We can, you know, book a clarity call and we can have a conversation around it, right? I'm just a human, having a human experience and I want to share my joy and gratitude with you. Okay. All right, guys, I hope you have a kick-ass week. Until next time.